With me is a very special guest joining us from London, Mohammad Nasheed. He has been the former president of Maldives, uh, but is currently the speaker of the Maldivian parliament. Uh, he is also the co-founder of uh, the ruling party. So welcome to Vion. Uh, since this is your first uh, uh, TV interview, uh, a first question which everyone wants to ask is about the terror attack uh, which happened, the assassination attempt uh, that happened. How are you doing now? Are you okay? How are you recuperating from uh, that incident? Well, um, thank you very much and thank you for um, having me on your TV. Uh, first, yes, it is my first television interview and I thank um, everyone who has been so kind to me uh, after the assassination attempt. Um, Indian authorities, um, the Foreign Secretary, the Speaker of the Parliament, uh, the High Commission to the Maldives. Um, everyone has been uh, so kind to me uh, after the attempt. Uh, the government of Maldives is investigating the matter, uh, but unfortunately they have not been able to uh, get to the bottom of the issue. Uh, they have not been able to identify the schemas uh, and the funders. Uh, they have captured, it was captured on CCTV camera. So therefore the man who detonated the bomb uh, was captured on camera and uh, him and four other associates are in prison now. Mm -hmm. Who do you think, sir, is responsible for uh, this attempt? This is uh, a major terror attack in your country, which has happened, especially targeting you. Well, uh, uh, of the, uh, uh, the person who is um, under arrest and the other four associates of him are linked to extremist Islamic ideology, especially of that uh, of, uh, of the ISIS. And they have uh, uh, conducted such attacks in the Maldives. Uh, people of that ideology have, uh, but not uh, through a, a, a remote device detonation as it was attempted on me. Uh, but there have been previously uh, three murders uh, that have the same pattern. It's very, very serious. Uh, it's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do you plan to deal with this issue of radicalization and terrorism? Any plan specifically by you on dealing this issue of, uh, of, of de-radicalization perhaps? Uh, because we know the numbers or a number of people who have gone from Maldives to uh, countries like Syria and other uh, countries who have been part of uh, the Islamic State. Well, yes, uh, that is true. Um, a fair amount of Maldivians did travel uh, to fight the war in Syria and Levant. But at the same time, we must understand uh, that the vast majority of the people of the Maldives are progressive and liberal minded people. Uh, the four or five elections, three presidential elections, four parliamentary elections, and three local council elections conducted after the 2008 uh, constitution, all suggest that extremist views have no place in the Maldives. Uh, none of the extremist conservative parties have, have ever uh, won seats in the parliament, neither even in the local council elections. But because the progressive uh, elements or the majority are devoid uh, with our party on the one side and those against us on the other side, uh, because that is divided. Uh, whenever uh, we come to power, we come to government, we have always been able to do that with uh, the extremists uh, uh, supporting us or with the conservative elements supporting us. Now, that has also been the case when President Yamin came to government. That was the case when I came to government in 2008. And unfortunately, that is the case even now. So I think uh, 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 our politicians, especially the liberal minded politicians must come together, must sit down and must work together so that we have a platform that is more liberal in its outlook. Uh, so politics has to realign. Uh, 
politics has to realign it is a, a broader picture which you have given but any thing on the ground on practical terms that can be done in terms of dealing with the issue of radicalization perhaps uh, uh, de radicalization centers uh, to talk about to start about these kinds of uh, initiatives on ground that can be talked about well we have spoken about these things for a very 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 long time but I, my understanding is for such constructive work to happen the politics has to align first uh, we cannot uh, uh, go ahead with such uh, programs while elements within let's say the home ministry or the police or the army or the customs or the education ministry while there are elements uh, extremist elements within these institutions so first we need to uh, reform these institutions Uh, and make sure that there is no deep state working within the state of the Maldives. Mm -hmm. uh, um, any way in which New Delhi can help uh, you in dealing with the issue of terrorism, in dealing uh, uh, with the issue of de-radicalization, counter-terrorism, uh, where there can be convergences? We know that already both sides are working, but anything would you suggest uh, that New Delhi can help, perhaps capacity building? Well, I think, uh, yes, there's a lot that New Delhi can do, and then they are doing a lot. Uh, capacity building within the police, capacity building within the military, within the education system. Um, all that work is actually, e even as I speak, going on. Uh, but there, also, I think it is time uh, for the establishment in New Delhi to see uh, a wider picture Uh, and to understand how, uh, again and again I say, politics can be realigned, how progressive forces can come onto a single platform, a single idea, and then win government accordingly. Not to win government through alliances that have the wrong ideology. Mm -hmm. uh, so now talking about uh, China worry, what specifically Uh, things you have done in terms of dealing with this issue, in terms of uh, making sure that the influence uh, in your country is uh, halted. We know under Yami there was increased influence of the Chinese. You have been very vocal about uh, the Chinese influence. Uh, so anything specifically you have done in dealing with the influence of China in halting that? Well, uh, you know, one of the things that we went into was to... Uh, is reassess the nation's debt. Uh, the parliament has worked very hard in assessing how much we, were, we are in debt to uh, different uh, Chinese companies, different Chinese banks, and also the Chinese state. Uh, we've called upon uh, China uh, to restructure the debt. Uh, it still hasn't happened. Uh, and again and again, If um, China wants to collect money from the Maldives, uh, which huge uh, uh, amounts uh, that we are now having to pay for to them, and again, with the difficulties that we have presently, not only because of COVID, but also because this exact projects that the money was spent on wasn't financially viable. So it's going to be very difficult for, for us to pay back the money. Uh, I think we, all our political parties, including the opposition PPM, uh, must again come down to the same platform where we understand diplomatic relations and where we understand that uh, the, you know, we must work together with our long time, long time neighbor India, and that we should have a special relationship with India, and we should have a India first foreign policy. I believe that it is possible for us to have an all party understanding on these issues. So I think I'll be working very hard uh, to see that the opposition also understands that we need to have an all party dialogue and all party understanding on foreign policy, especially on our relations with India. 
So let's talk about the domestic politics. It looks like uh, now there is a political and ideological separation between you and uh, President Stoli. Do you think that it's going to impact the unity of the party? And if the unity of the party is impacted, there can be perhaps cracks which can be used uh, perhaps by even China. Well, you see, uh, you know, you can never impose a unity on anyone. Uh, and you cannot wish, wishful thinking doesn't lead, lead us to stability either. My view is that our party will remain united. I cannot see any harm or any serious split uh, between me and the president. Of course, we have an ideologically, ideological difference now. I believe that the president must revert back to uh, the core issues that we believe in which is a moderate version of Islam, and which is also not to pander to extremist views. Yes, that can, for the short while, bring us some political support. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think in the long term, or even in the medium term, that is going to lead us to any stability. Mm -hmm. uh, so recently, there were elections uh, in your country, the, the, uh, the Mali Council election, in which uh, your party lost in PPM won. Any specific reason for that uh, for that loss? Do you think that loss perhaps could be reflected in future when the elections happen for uh, the top leadership in your country? Well, I think it's when when you depart from our core values and when you appease minority views, uh, then you know the wider public understands that. Why we lost uh, the local council elections is because. The MDP voters, our own voters, didn't turn up. They felt that their core beliefs and ideals were ignored and that the government was pandering to uh, minority views. So they were not very happy about that. They wanted to, especially in Mali, they wanted to give a clear message to the leadership. I believe that the government must correct its course quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, sir, will you be keen to stand for the next uh, elections, the presidential elections in your country? I mean, uh, what's your... Well, I've always been saying, I've always been saying, I haven't retired and I'm available. Uh -huh. uh, and I will make myself available for all elections. Uh -huh. So my last question to you, uh, politics uh, sees many changes, uh, uh, including uh, joining hands with the opposition. Will you ever join hands with PPM? It was a political anthem, but looking at the situation which is emerging, it looks like, will you ever, or it is a no-go area for you? But it's this confusion here. What I am, I am seriously calling upon the opposition to look, please look at what is happening in the country. Mm -hmm. You have won elections once, and they did it with extremist elements within their government. We have won twice, and we did exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. And adhering to these ideas is letting extremism creep into our country. And that's not going to be in our interest. And I don't believe the good people of the PPM, mm -hmm. neither you know, solid supporters of the MDP, would like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I am willing to work with the PPM. That doesn't necessarily mean I am willing to you know, work with anyone in the PPM. What I'm suggesting is I am willing to work with people who are willing to come to a singular understanding on where we want our country to go. Uh, we do not want our country to become another Afghanistan. We do not want our country to fail. Uh, we want prosperous moments. Our people want to have a good life and we want to give them a good life. Mm -hmm. Give them a good life. That, of course, uh, is the message. But uh, hopefully, we'll see you soon in Delhi, sir. I mean, uh, it's been a long time. Uh, you've got well, I, I, I know it's been a long time. The pandemic hasn't been an easy uh, period. Uh, travel has been extremely difficult. Uh, 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 I, as soon as I am better and able to recover, which I am recovering now, uh, I will soon be in Delhi. Uh, uh, I'm sure I would love to do that. Well, thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion extensively on several topics, whether it is uh, uh, the, the uh, terror attack, whether it's uh, the issue of China, or, of course, uh, domestic politics. Thank you so much, sir. 
Thank you. Thank you, everyone in Delhi, and Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak to you, sir. Thank you.